Now, in Judges chapter 4, I love this portion of Scripture. So, in, in the book of Judges, you know, Ehud died. He was one of the judges. And so now the people, again, did evil in the sight of the Lord, right? And so then God had to keep raising up judges. So in, um, in Judges 4.1, it says, When Ehud was dead, the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. So the Lord sold them into the hand of Jabin, king of Canaan, who reigned in Hazor. The commander of his army was Sisera, who dwelt in Lord, I'm not even going to try that. Herosheth something. Actually, that means the silence of the Gentiles. But listen, so Jabin, guess what Jabin's name means? It means to be intelligent, mind of the flesh, head knowledge. So here she is again fighting. She's, she's there. Deborah is going to have to come against this king who thinks he knows more than Jesus. And it says here, And the children of Israel cried out to the Lord, for Jabin had 900 chariots of iron. For 20 years he had harshly oppressed the children of Israel. Now, again, these people did not have weaponry. They just, I mean, it's like, it almost seems like here, like what I'm saying, like, are you kidding me? So our prayers are going to make a difference, our taking a stand? Yeah. yeah. The enemy, the world has 900 chariots of armor, of our, of our, our iron. What do we have? We have the almighty God. We have the power of the blood, the power of the word that overthrows the enemy. And that's not nonsense. That's reality. And so um, it says here, now Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapido, was judging um, in Israel. She was judging at the time. And so um, let's just say, uh, all right, I got so many scriptures here, which I'm bypassing here. So, all right, so she's judging, all right? So she's sitting between Rama, which means high place, all right? So she's dealing with the high place of the enemy. She's dealing with all the occult activity, the illicit worship to idols. She's dealing, like, in between the self-worship ideologies, abortion, everything that worships their intellect, okay? And then she's sitting between Rama and Bethel, which represents the house of God, all right? So, but she's sitting, she's dwelling in a place, waiting. She's a prophet. She's hearing the voice and the word of the Lord. And so it says here, and um, she would sit under a tree, the palm tree of, of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the mountains of Ephraim, which means fruitfulness. God is restoring all that's been lost, and that's what he's going to do. And she knew that, that God was going to take that stand. And it says, the children of Israel came up to her for judgment, and she sent and called for Barak, the son of Abimelech, from Kadesh in Naphtali, <laughs> and said, has not the Lord God of Israel commanded... Uh, go and deploy troops at Mount Tabor. Take with you 10,000 men of the sons of Naphtali and the sons of Zeb Zebulon, all right? And against you, I will deploy Sisera, the commander of Jabin's army, all right? And, and she, she's prophesying, and, and, and I will deliver him into your hand. But Barak said, if you will go with me, then I will go. But if not, I won't go with you, all right? But now, I'm going to just say this. I feel like this is a picture of the apostolic and the prophetic working together. And you know what? Barak wasn't really a, a, a scaredy cat because he's also mentioned in the Hebrews Hall of Faith. In Hebrews 11.32, it says, he, through Barak, um, though, though Barak said, you must go with him. He's mentioned, I wrote here, in the Hall of Faith. You know, so Barak... You know, you might think he was fearful, but God saw him as great, one with great faith, because he was working with Deborah. So I, I, I don't really, we need each other, okay? That's how I see it. I see it apostolic and prophetic, all right? And so Deborah arose, and, and they, they, listen, he was thinking that his chariots of armor is going to overthrow the enemy, but there was a torrential rainfall when you, I'm not going to have time to go through it, in Judges 5, and their, their, their chariots got stuck, <laughs> See, the Lord has a way where you don't know that you think there's no way. And so, and they defeated the enemy. And, and then what happens is Sisera, who is the, um, you know, the king there, he takes off and, and he, he runs and he gets to um, uh, Jael's home, all right? And Jael... Even she knew, like she she heard she heard the 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 word out in the land about what was hap happening, what was taking place, and so Jael, you know, and and she 
she was bold because it was in her home. It was in her tent. And it's like us. We, in our home, we have authority over what's coming in and what's going out, right? And so when she saw the enemy there and she saw Sisera, he said, come. She said, come on in. You can come in. But she had a plan. She had a plan to take him out too. And so what happened was, um, it says here, uh, Sisera fled away on foot, hey, to the tent of Jael, the wife of Heber, and there was peace between Jabin and her husband. But Jael went out to meet him. Listen, she's not running from the enemy. She's facing the enemy eyeball to eyeball. She's going to the enemy and looking him right in the face. And so he came to her house, okay? And, and so, and, and so um, where am I? And it says, and Jael went to meet sister and said, turn aside, my Lord. He said, she says, come on in. Turn aside, my Lord. Do not fear. And he turned aside with her, and she covered him with a blanket. And I did look up that word cover somewhere here. And that means to cover, to conceal, and to overwhelm. And I believe God is anointing us in this hour to overwhelm the lies of the enemy with the truth of the word of God. And that's what she did. And then it says here, he said to her, please give me a little drink for I'm thirsty. She says, sure. She opened up a jug of milk, gave him a drink and covered him, probably put a little something in there. And, and he said to her, stand at the door of my tent. And if anyone comes and inquires of you and says, is there any mere man here, you shall say no. That was the door of her tent, not his tent. And, and, and so it says, Jael took a tent peg. She says, really? See, when the enemy gets so bold and he thinks he's going to destroy you, and that enemy comes in, and it's like, really? And so she took that tent peg, and as he was laying down, and she covered him because she was flowing in the wisdom of the Lord. And as she covered him, she took that tent peg and put it through his temple. She put it through the strongholds of the lie of the enemy that had told her that if you do this, you're going to be defeated. You're going to be destroyed. Today, we need to put the tent peg through the lies of the enemy that tries to keep us in bondage, that says this fear that you're too afraid you can't say this you're too stupid you don't have a voice you didn't have an education who are you to go and say something who are you to say something whose voice is louder in your life see we got to get that ten peg and take the enemy out and put it through his head in Jesus name Listen, the enemy's going to say, you've been defeated for so long, you're never going to earn money, you have a rotten marriage, you have rotten kids, but the Lord is saying, I am a God of covenant, and I will do all things if you have faith in me, if you trust me, put the tent peg through the head of the enemy, is what the Lord is saying. Amen? So it's time for us, it's time for us to rise up and believe the word of the Lord. It's time. We can't be playing any longer. We need to say enough is enough. God, is there anything too hard for you? There is nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing too hard. In Luke 1, it says, what is impossible with man is possible with God. See, we got to break the limitations off our minds. We have to come out of that mindset that limits us from flowing in what God has for us in this hour. I don't care if you're stuck in porn. I don't care if you're stuck in financial despair. I don't care if you... They're like you hate yourself, God is saying, listen, I'm doing new things. This is a dawning of a new day. He's saying, just cry out to me. Ask me because I'll reveal myself to you in a way that you have never experienced as God. He'll remove the scales off your eyes. He'll break you out of your deception because he's faithful. He's a personal God. He's a God that's alive. He makes himself real to the individual. It's not just to me, it's to you. It's time. It's time. We say let God arise and our enemies be scattered. We are to be the church of God that God has called us to be. He's raising up this remnant army. I'm going to ask you to stand. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Lord, we, we repent where we have pulled ourselves back and where we have been afraid to step out to be a voice for you. But today is the dawning of a new day, oh God. 
We say yes to let God arise. Let us be that voice because we have your DNA. We have your senses in us. We see through your eyes, oh God. You are the spirit of truth, and we decree today that truth will prevail. And have final say in Jesus' name.